lecture notes, it could be book notes, or whatever else. But the worst thing to do is study from the book. Learn that quickly, um, that it's not effective. And uh, the books, uh, as you get into higher and higher level classes, the books get longer and longer. And it's impossible to study from the book. So you quickly find that nobody studies from the books. So everybody studies from their notes. And the notes are what you're going to use as your review. Now what you do, you should do is this. It depends on the style of final. Some final exams will have like um, three or four questions. Each question requires a lot of depth, depth of understanding. There, you just gotta <coughs> grind through everything and, and then make sure you know it. But our final exam is all multiple choice. It's gonna be a lot of questions. And so 19 chapters, you know, how many questions can I ask on a multiple choice? Well, all multiple choice plus chemical reactions, which is um, nomenclature, predicting reactions. Hmm? How many points are the multiple choice? Multiple choice is about 180 points. 180 points. So how many questions can I ask? Well, it depends. You know, if each question is worth one point, then it's 180 questions. But 180 questions, depends on how much time you have for the test. You know, 180 questions would be um, one question per minute on a three hour exam. And so one question per minute, um, well some questions are gonna be quick to answer, other questions aren't. So one question, so I, I, do, I do less. I do about, um, it depends. Let's say maybe 70, 80 questions. Do 70 questions, two to three minutes, or no, one to two minutes per question. And so it varies. So, in, in, in other words, um, the style of final is different. And so, the style of final is going to be lots of questions, not worth many points, versus a few questions, each worth a lot of points. And so, if that's the case, then you think, okay, how many questions can I ask per chapter? Well, if there's, um, you know, chapter one is pretty pretty much nothing, So, but let's just say there are approximately 20 chapters. With approximately 20 chapters, if I ask um, three questions you know, per chapter, that's 60. Four questions per chapter, you know, that's 80 questions. And so maybe three to four questions per chapter, maybe make that three to five because there are fewer than 20 chapters. So if we have three to five questions per chapter, then this is the way you got to think. You don't need a study guide for this because you just think, what are the three to five most important concepts and most important calculations per chapter? And then figure those out, you know? And so I, I would expect at the, at the bare minimum to be able to, to, to figure out, you know, this is important calculation, stoichiometry, obviously you can have stoichiometry calculation, or this or that, and so that's what you would do. You know, what are the three to five? In, in the study. So we're looking at the learning objective for each chapter. Help with that? No. 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 The lear uh, well, you know, I don't think I don't think studying from the book is a great idea, um, personally. But because um, you want to focus it a little bit more, you could use learning objectives, but. There, are there three to five learning objectives? No, but you could pick out the three to five best learning objectives. That would work, you know, but it's a little bit different because, you know, um, learning objectives, they have to cover everything because it's part of the, um, it's part of the book. They need to cover all those topics, you know. But for us, um, you know, we don't hold each of those learning objectives with equal weight. You know, how you know what, what's equal weight is, is this is why you need the notes. You need the notes so you know what's more important and what's less important out of those learning objectives. So, so I think um, We, we can review stuff. I mean, we got time to review. So we can review whatever you want to review. But you could do a quick review yourself. I mean, this is the way I would do it.
that's one of the best ways. You use the past exams in the, the, the question. Yeah. The question is mostly multiple choice. So you focus on multiple choice. There are going to be calculations, but the calculations are going to be in multiple choice format. So you look at the calculations and the multiple choice questions from the past exams. That's the way you study first. And then, um, so, the exam? Or is it going to include, or is the final going to include the last part as well? Because we just took the test. Yeah, uh, that's, I haven't decided yet. And uh, it's probably not 19. Okay. But, uh, mm -hmm. I'll probably change it a little bit uh, from what the practice of the past time. So it did a little different. Final exam, you're going to have even more bonus points possible. So. so hopefully, like chapter one is so easy that you know you don't really need to study this. You heard it so many times. But what did we do? Well, well, you know, you could go through the um, learning objectives, for example. Um, Introduction to Chemistry, Lobosia, in the beginning of experimental chemistry. Introduction to Chemistry, Science, Scientific Method, um, Science of Chemistry Today, Learn How to Learn Chemistry. And so out, out of these, you know, what was the most important scientific, scientific method? And that's all we spent time on, so I was, you know, just only the scientific method, you know, basically here. then um, what do you need to know about the scientific method? Well, can you first, do you remember the examples I gave for the scientific method? Hmm? The, the apple, yeah, that's one example. Another example? Lobosier's experiment. Can you get the Just remember, remember, uh, just remembering the examples we talked about. Scientific. The other thing is, this is not good. You don't want to study from the book because what is the scientific method in the book? Does this look like anything that I talked about? No. No. So it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea for any class uh, um, because the professor, and I, I found this. Um, Yeah, the professor, once, once you get to a certain level, they can't adhere, they can't lecture from the book. There's just too much stuff in the book. They got to um, focus on certain things. And so they don't follow the book. That's what I found in most of my classes. They don't follow the book. Well, I didn't follow the book either. They don't follow the book. This, in fact, this, uh, you know, if you're going to learn the scientific method, you might as well not learn the, this is like the, you might as well just learn the, the normal scientific method, not some kind of simplified or dumbed down version of the scientific method. Okay. This would be, well, I, this is not really simplified or dumbed down, it's just not you know, presented in the same way that people would do it logically. You know, um, I guess you could start from anything. Uh, maybe it's not. It's just you know, that there's a certain way, of, a certain order of doing things. Like this is not exactly clear. So this makes it look like the law. It's very important here. Is the law the ultimate end of scientific method? I'm so confused as to 
actually why the law is not the end, because like the law is the law. The law is the law. You know, if, like if you define it, it's like the definite. Yeah. yeah. The, like the yeah, this is different than a, like the final thing, like the legal law. Thing. This is a scientific yeah. law. So we have the law of conservation of mass, which Lavoisier, those were the original experiments in chapter one. Is that the end? You know, uh, does that the mass initial is equal to the mass final? And so the law of conservation of mass is delta M, this is in mathematical form, is equal to zero. This would be the law of conservation of mass. There's no change of mass. Delta is the change, there's no change in math. And so, is that enough? Or are we good now? We can just um, stop doing experiments? No, because what people are going to say is, why was there no change in math? You know, that kind of So, the law leads you to the theory of explaining the law? The law. <coughs> You know, you should have a, a also a definition of the law. What is the law in your own words? You know? After, you, let me tell you this. What I would have done uh, is just, uh, you know, as a student, I would have probably seen this hundreds of times by now, uh, this scientific method. And then I, w I probably would have started thinking, okay, what is a law in my own words? You know, what is the significance of a law? And so a law in my own words is a pattern, and this pattern is very reproducible. It's so reproducible, we can come up with a mathematical equation for it, an empirical equation. And so a uh, law is just a mathematical pattern, and that mathematical pattern sticks. So if we got the, the law, then we could just use the law. Okay, if that mathematical pattern sticks, then in the future I do another reaction. I'll just use the law. That's perfectly fine, and that would be acceptable in science. But, you know, people will have a search for a deeper meaning or a deeper understanding. Of course, we can apply the law to lots of reactions. In fact, all the reactions that we do. But that search for deeper understanding is what leads to hypothesis and theory because okay we have a mathematical pattern but why does this mathematical pattern work and so this brought up the other example I talked about the apple falling down and there was one other example brought up the scientific method either here actually here and later in chapter two can somebody Is connect the balloon? no not the balloon the balloon was part of this one Lavoisier's type the balloon was conservation of mass burn things, those things. Your mindset changes. You know, when I was at uh, Santa Barbara City College, I had a certain mindset. The when I got to UCLA, it was one of, one of the, one of the first things I found out. The student at UCLA is very hyper competitive there, extremely competitive. And the reason it's so competitive is you got these you know, fellow students who've been dreaming. You know, they have laser focus of going and becoming some kind of surgeon since. Or in kindergarten or something like that. So, you know, whereas I wasn't, I was like, um, I don't know, all over the place. And so you got people who are really on top of things. So you want to, you'll also want to be really on top of things as well. And so being really, you know, the other example, you should have, you should have been able to connect it because you know, scientific method, you see it, you see it again and again. The other one was this delta m equals zero. What did that lead to? Uh huh. Yeah. That's it. Right. So that was the other example. And so we had the apple falling, and then uh, 
concept. Lavoisier's experiments led to atomic theory, basically. So this is a conclusion. But that conclusion, did, did they say that in, in chapter one? No, they didn't say that. That's something you had to connect yourself. They, of course, they could have said it, you know, but they didn't. In fact, when they got the atomic theory, you know, how did they say atomic theory developed? It, it is a couple of people came up with hypotheses. One hypothesis was that atoms or matters consists of tiny particles called atoms. The other hypothesis was it's infinitely divisible. Since I've deviated from the book so far, you know, studying from the PowerPoint, uh, that's why I say, you know, better to study from the notes. Yeah, because it, it's uh, a bit different. It'll save you time, too. Well, let's take a look at Rebecca's chapter. So I would just do that, you know. Um, you could use the PowerPoints as the notes, basically, but, you know, you just focus. You know, I, 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 I pretty much use the PowerPoints. I didn't, um, I tried to stay on the PowerPoints. And so this will be your template. But I did change some stuff. I introduced chemical reactions early. One, to, to keep them all together. You know, the metathesis, the acid base, and the redox. And two, to give you more time to, to remember, to memorize these types of things. So, you know, although this is chapter 19, if you only had one week to, to prepare for this, it's, it's pretty tough to do in one week. So, we, we already talked about the chart method earlier. The book's going to talk about the chart method now. And so let's finish up that problem here. But you know, we can go through and take a look at other stuff as it comes up. All right, so this is the first thing that uh, we comes up here. This would be called an advanced problem. This would be called an advanced problem because this doesn't follow one of the simple patterns that you might have memorized, right? And so, you, normally I see res these two responses to a problem like this. One, blank page. You know, couldn't even start it because it didn't look like anything we had covered. It was nothing like the homework. I had never talked about this before, right? And so this would be an example of like the 10%. Ten percent, ninety percent is just stuff you've seen before. Ten percent stuff you haven't seen before. Ten percent is supposed to challenge you, you know, mentally. Um, although I think uh, I think my tests are one hundred percent stuff you've seen before, pretty much. And so that's why the notes are so important. If it's one hundred percent stuff you've seen before, then probably can. I had one test where it was 100% stuff I'd seen before. It was history of French film, the UCLA. It was the easiest class. But anyway, here, this was silver plus HCl plus sodium nitrate. What should you do? Well, um, what we should do is, we're given this, we're given a mixture of chemicals, we should just try to figure out, you know, if you think about silver, what are the chemical properties of silver? It's a uh, metal. What else? Well, you know, yeah, good conductor of electricity. That would be de metals are defined by certain properties. One of the um, chemical pro uh, chemical properties that metals are defined by are metals do what in uh, chemical reactions? Do 
what the reaction is. I think of when I think of a metal, it's a reducing agent. Whether it's a good reducing agent or a bad reducing agent, it's a reducing agent because metals tend to lose electrons. What other chemical properties? Are metals good at neutralizing acids? Good at neutralizing bases? No. No. So that's um, acid base. So we redox it, it's a reducing agent, and then Metathesis. Do metals participate in the metath? No, it's not an ion. And so the only property that I can think of for silver is it's a reducing agent, chemical property. So how about HCl? Strong acid. Strong acid. Terribly weak base. Chloride is terribly weak. In fact, we call chloride neutral, so pretty much just a strong acid. What else? It's a mineral acid, that's true. But a mineral acid just means that H plus is the oxidizer, so this is an oxidizer. HCl is an oxidizer. Well, we've got a reducer, we got an oxidizer. Maybe there's a redox reaction that happens. And then, um, well, um, Chloride's also a reducer. H plus is an oxidizer, chloride's a reducer. So chloride's a terrible reducer. Does it participate in metathesis? Yes. You know, H plus likes lots of anions. Chloride likes some cations, only three of them. What three cations does chloride like? Silver. Wait a minute. Didn't I just say? So can we have a metabolism reaction between silver and chloride? No. No, absolutely not. Why? Yes, because silver is not an ion. This is silver metal. Silver metal and silver ion are two different things. Let's say, you know, let's say you wanted some salt for your french fries, but you only have sodium metal in the cabinet. Not this would be a crazy um, food cabinet, but if you only had sodium metal, could you substitute sodium metal? No. No, because it's called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? They're totally different. Silver metal is not the same as silver ion. They're totally different. Silver metal is a reducing agent. Silver ion is a pretty good oxidizer. You know, it can oxidize a lot of stuff, lots of stuff including your skin, your eyes, whatever, you can oxidize it. Turn, turns everything black. Paper, paper is easy to oxidize. But silver, I, I wouldn't worry about touching silver. I definitely worry about touching silver ion. And so totally different. Um, so, you know, what I do is you get something like this, you kind of get an idea of what kind of reaction is going to happen. So. We have something like this, sodium nitrate, well that's some ionic compound. So maybe what we, you know, the first thing I'd do is maybe we have a double replacement reaction here, A, B plus C, D. So we already talked about that, right? It's not going to happen because there's no, because we know about the, uh, what was the effect? Yeah, you know, the strong acids are all the same. So the strong acids are all going to have the same pH. You know, because all the H pluses are going to be knocked off. The weak acids, however, are going to have different pHs. You know, the weak acids, you're going to not be able to pluck as many of the apples off. You know, the more apples you pluck off, 
the lower the pH, the more acidic it is. And so the higher, you know, the weaker it is, the higher the apples are, and the more difficult it is to pluck off, and the fewer apples you're going to get, the fewer apples you're going to get, the pH is going to go up. It's going to be less acidic. You know, pH goes down, the more acidic pH goes up, less acidic. And so weak acids are going to have varying acidity because uh, uh, they're going to have different amounts of H plus in there, and their pHs are going to be quite different. So, so uh, for example, 0.1 molar HCl pH is um, 1. 0.1 molar acetic acid, the pH is closer to 3. You know, a lot less H plus was plucked off. You know, like that. But anyway, um, so this is the Levinson effect. So we, we don't have any double replacement. Maybe silver was going to be a spectator. Could have easily just been a spectator. We don't know. Okay, so if, if there's no metathesis, then what type of reaction do we look for next? If there's no metathesis, we look for redox or acid base. We'll just do acid base because um, that's the order I, I went through. If we do acid base, what's the first step in Bronsted and Lowry acid base? We. The first step in Bronsted and Lowry acid base is. Uh, let me just put up the, the instructions. Go ahead and come up with the inventory for this. So this, let's inventory this mixture. What do we have? Well, um, inventory is we got to list all the major species. So we have AG solid. We don't have HCl molecules because they're all going to be ionized, and so we have. H plus and CL. Yeah, so that would be the inventory. And then we have sodium plus and then three. And then we look. Um, here we have a choice. We can look at the acid base chart, determine the strongest acid and the strongest base present. We're doing Bronsted Lowry. So if we do Bronsted Lowry, we'll take a look at the Acid strengths here and base strengths. Let me go back here. So, so. Okay, now we're doing it by species here. Um, so, the, why the sodium nitrate break up again? It's not, it's not as far as. You you break up um, soluble salts, soluble salts, okay. strong acids. Soluble salts are called electrolytes. It's another name for soluble salts. Electrolytes. All right. Do you see silver ions on the list of acids and bases? Or not silver ions? Sorry, this is not silver ions. This is silver metal. Do you see it? And it doesn't make sense. So one, uh, one level, you know, this is why I said, when, I, when we first covered this, I said an elementary school child can do this because they don't need to know any chemistry. They don't need to know any chemistry because they just look on this list and see is it there or not there. Right? That's it. But of course, you could do a lot more. You could do a lot more because you know the definition of what an acid and what a base is. An acid is a proton donor, a base is a proton acceptor. So does um, silver have any hydrogen atoms it can donate? No. no. Will it accept any hydrogen atoms? No. no. 
Um, so this is going to be a huge problem. So an elementary school child wouldn't be able to do that, but we should be able to do that. H plus, that's going to be acid. Chloride, that's base. Sodium ions, acid, it has an H it can donate. An H atom it can donate. Proton donor, H atom, no. It's going to be neutral. Nitrate, base. Nitrate's a base, off the chart. We know it's neutral, you know, um, because nitrate and chloride aren't very basic at all. They're awful bases. But there's something else we're missing in the inventory. What, do we, what am I missing in the inventory? Uh, yeah, another acid and another base, but what is it? What am I missing in water. the inventory? Water. I'm missing water. Water is a solvent, but uh, water is both an acid and a temperature. And so what's the strongest acid present? HCl. Well, um, HCl is already broken apart. These, these acids are all too strong to exist because in water, what's going to happen? They're all going to break apart and form hydronium or H+. Plus. So the strongest acid is going to be H+, plus, which is AKA hydronium, right? And the strongest base is going to be nitrate. Nitrate, yeah, yeah. Nitrate's stronger than chloride, but you know, well, not a weak. But we see water. Water is the strongest base. And so it looks like the reaction: the strongest acid plus the strongest base will yield. Hydronium, but you know, hydronium is already H plus, AQ, you know, mentally, and so this is really nothing. This is kind of like a no reaction type deal. We start with hydronium, we end up with hydronium. Um, this is just to show H plus is not stable anyway. H plus is so reactive. It's going to. But H plus is basically short for H Yeah, that's what we do in water. H plus outside of water is just H plus, a single proton. Yeah. A single proton is terribly unstable. Why? Because of its size. It's an incredibly small size. It's very reactive with a, with a full positive charge. Uh, so that was a bust. Um, acid base is nothing, which leaves us with redox. We're back to chapter 19. Let's see if we'll have uh, Carbolici says to do. talks about strong oxidizers, weak oxidizers. We just looked that up on the chart. We have the chart. And so this is it. Write the net ionic equation for the redox reaction between cobalt 2 ion and silver metal. So he doesn't give step-by-step, -step, but you don't really need step-by-step -step instructions. You just look at the chart. Right? This is called the consult the chart method. So he doesn't. But the reason I give step-by-step -step instructions is because uh, to avoid, you know, missing certain things you don't want to miss, and uh, being able to do this. And so I'm going to go away from Krakulici and do it my own way instead. And so uh, what, is, what is my own way? Uh, What's the first step in the chart method? Well, do we need the chart method? Can't we just do this single replacement? No. We could. 
char method is better, especially in a problem like this. What we could do is we could see, is there a single replacement between this and this? Let's just do it. It's single replacement is so easy. Let's do it. I'm sorry? Wouldn't you, what? We just adjust the ratio. Silver plus HCl is going to form what? Silver chloride. Not hydronium. Hydronium, there's going to be water around. It's charred. Plus H plus. We can't. Yeah, we can't do that because this is not balanced. You see, all of a sudden, electrons disappear. Over here, you know, the number of protons equals the number of electrons, so everything's neutral. Over here, we have lost an electron. The charges have to balance, so this cannot be that. In fact, single replacement says element plus compound yields compound plus element. So this is H2. Well, that's um, not a problem. We just multiply this by one half. Now everything's balanced. Or rather than multiplying this by one half, we could double, 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 and then single. And that works too. And so what we'll do is we'll just look, is there driving force for this? And so the driving force is based on activity series. Which one is more reactive, silver or hydrogen gas? We don't, do we even need the activity series for that? Everybody should know. What would you rather fill your trunk with? Silver coins or hydrogen gas? Yes. Hydrogen so gas. Yeah. Um, no, he, I think you'd want to fill your trunk with silver coins rather than a trunk full of hydrogen gas. Oh, I thought you meant like uh, a gas tank. Oh, no, no, I meant like a trunk, like a treasure chest. What would you rather fill your treasure chest with, silver coins or hydrogen gas? Silver coins, yeah. And so what we say is NR, no reaction, because we're going from um, less active, less active, to more active element activity series, so NR. Well, we have one more chance, silver plus sodium nitrate. Silver plus sodium nitrate is going to yield what? Silver nitrate. Yeah, silver nitrate and sodium metal. So let me ask you again, what would you rather fill your treasure chest with? Silver coins or sodium metal? Silver coins, yeah. So no reaction again. Now, if you knew the exceptions, there's one more thing I should try. What should I try? There's one more thing I should try if you knew your exceptions for single replacement. Did you take the nitrogen out of nitrate? No, we're not going to take the nitrogen out of nitrate. We can leave. Now, the one more thing we should try that we could potentially be missing. Okay, then you shouldn't do single replacement if you don't remember it. Unless, well, it depends. It also depends on the instructor because the, stru the instructor might not be mean. And, uh, might be nice. You know? The instructor is nice, they won't. But, I, you know, I don't think that's being nice because, you know, uh, sometimes you want that mean instructor because um, you could get a so false sense of security. That is silver metal plus water. Water we can call HOH. HOH. What should form from this? Silver hydroxide. Yeah, silver hydroxide and hydrogen. We've got to consider this because water is also present. In fact, water is probably the most abundant species here. So this is the potential single replacement reaction with water. But we're lucky because silver versus hydrogen, 
we just did that. Uh, there should be no reaction. Mm -hmm. So why is an exception? Water is an ex no, water is an exception to the single replacement pattern. The single replacement pattern is A plus BX, right? But you always have to worry about water, too, because water is always present. And so since water is always present, we've got to worry about potential reaction with water, whereas, you know, everybody focuses on the A plus BX only. I did an example of this. You guys remember the example I did of this? See. It was too long ago, probably. I didn't. I asked um, what were the exceptions. Did anybody remember? Well, nobody remembered, so it's best to play it safe and do this chart method. But I told you what the exceptions were, and we did an example of the exceptions way back when. And so let's see um, what the, those were. That was in. Part three. Right Download it. make these things more memorable, you should live, like, literally, what I do is I, I have the notes, but I don't just go over it over and over again. You know, after you go over it over and over and over, it gets boring. So what you do is you start writing little notes, you know, note to self. You know, what was the significance of this? What was the point? In other words, what was the take-home message of this example we did in class? Does anybody remember? Okay, potassium is, is carefully added to sodium chloride. There's no reaction. I, I don't want to do it again, but I'll do it again because potassium is added to sodium chloride. What forms? Potassium chloride and sodium. Well, which one's more reactive, potassium or sodium? Well, we have the activity series. Hmm? Sodium is more rea reactive. Potassium is more reactive? Yes, potassium is more. Actually, maybe this is the wrong one. I should have done sodium plus potassium before I. But anyway. Um, yeah, I should have done sodium plus potassium. But anyway, this reaction is not going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Let me show you what, what will happen. Because, um, you know, there's a little bit of sodium chloride in there. And yes, it could react with the sodium chloride, but there's lots of what? There's lots of water. And so what happens when potassium metal and water combine? set up, you have to have a business. And so um, certain chemicals, they do have restrictions. And so as long as you have like a business that, that and you can show that you need to use potassium or whatever for your business or research, then you can buy it. Okay, but like the average Joe, that wants to... Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no, they don't. 
they don't, and then you have to open an account. Like, for example, there's a big chemical company called Spectrum here. So I have a personal account with Spectrum because uh, there's some things, but you know, I talked to them and I wanted to get some stuff to do some side research projects that I was working on. So they were able to do it. This cesium there. Oh, well, this rubidium. Rubidium. Rubidium and water. generation of hydrogen gas should produce quite an explosion. So once it hit that melting point, boom, 
but up until then, it reacted slowly and then hit the melting point. This happened to me, too, because I used to work with lots of potassium and sodium because I did a lot of synthesis. And um, what happened was uh, there was a reaction that was going slow. It was going too slow. And so I started breaking up the um, sodium into smaller and smaller pieces. And then right when it melted, it exploded. But fortunately, it exploded inside this box, so I wasn't hurt. But everybody on the floor came running because of a big explosion. time it did explode was I had to work in a in a big box because of air there couldn't be any air around and one time it did explode I was in a brush I was trying to get it to react faster and faster so I crushed the potassium into smaller and smaller pieces increase the surface area get it to react faster but then it started going exponential that is the rate just shot up and skyrocketed and then just exploded it happened within like a, a couple of seconds like it, everything was calm, under control, and then two seconds later, it was out of control, exploded. Normally chemists will do this. Chemists normally work with a bucket of ice water next to them. If the reaction starts going too out of control, we dump it in the ice, cool it down, slow it down so it doesn't explode. I, I can put ice in to my box because my box is, um, water and air free. So I put a bunch of ice in there, I'm gonna kill off all my chemicals. So rather than putting ice in there, I put a huge aluminum plate with radiating fins on it to cool it down. And so I, I did my reaction on top of this radiant, uh, and then uh, the heat could dissipate, but it wasn't enough, you know? It wasn't enough. 
Fortunately, it was a big box, a plexiglass box, and so the explosion was contained inside the block box. So were your hands, did you have holes for your hands? Yeah, right, gloves, holes, that kind of thing. It's called a dry box, I'll show you. And is it a vacuum inside it? Is it no. no, it's, a, it's the opposite of a vacuum. But There's high pressure inside that. Was it in that air, or is it just like super pure air? No, I use, uh, we use different things. One helium is one, argon's another, and nitrogen is the third. The one I was doing was nitrogen box. And argon's probably one of the most common dry box. I had a lot of pressure in there. These gloves are sticking like straight out because I have a lot of pressure in there because I want the argon to diffuse out or the helium to diffuse out. I want nothing to get in. This is kind of low pressure, you know? So that means some stuff, these gloves aren't totally impermeable. Some stuff can get through the gloves. I don't want anything getting through. And so we always had overpressure inside the box. Not huge, you know, but always overpressure. Never see this. You know, pressure going the opposite way. And so, you know, uh, I wanted to bring some stuff to cool it, but I didn't have anything to cool it. So you're working in there, and boom, an explosion. This isn't very good. It's like the biological. All right, we'll take a break now.